Welcome students back to chapter 6 on bones and skeletal tissue. Um, this lecture is going to focus on um, kind of the macro, kind of gross anatomy of our skeleton of our bony tissue. Uh, starting with the two various textures uh, that we find in our bones. We have what we call compact bone and then something called spongy or trapecular or cancellous bone. Um, so compact bone is kind of smooth, solid looking, it's quite dense, um, and it's usually kind of the outer layer of the bones. The spongy bone is kind of that inner bone, and it's sort of a honeycomb essentially. It's all of these little flat pieces of bone, they're, they're called spicules or trabiculae, um, and it's, it's usually deep to the compact bone, um, and it does in some instances kind of look like a sponge if you've ever like looked at particularly not necessarily like the sponge on your sink but if you've ever seen uh, a sponge from the ocean it has that kind of cancellous kind of honeycomb texture um, so the compact bone is is much more solid looking um, whereas the spongy bone is a lot more porous looking Depending on whether we are looking at a long bone or a short, flat, or a regular bone, we use a little bit of termino different terminology. So the long bones um, have what we call a shaft or a diaphysis. And then the two ends that are kind of wider and more expanded are the epiphyses. So this happens to be the arm bone, the humerus. Um, so this is the end that makes the shoulder joint. This is the end that makes the elbow joint. So this is the proximal epiphysis. This is the distal epiphysis connected by the shaft or diaphysis uh, between them. In the middle of the diaphysis is uh, an open space called the medullary cavity. It fills with yellow marrow as we age. You'll see there are blood vessels running throughout the spongy bone. You'll also see these perforating arteries um, that um, go into the bone, kind of an in and through these different kind of spaces in the bone. You'll see here what we call the epiphyseal line. This is where the epiphysis connects to the diaphysis. Um, this is the kind of remnants of our growth plates. This is where our growth plates would be found in a child, um, but are no longer actual growth plates in an adult. You'll also see the ends of the bones are covered in articular cartilage, uh, both ends of the bones. Anytime you have bones coming together, you're going to have some articular cartilage. Um, in that medullary cavity is either red or yellow marrow, typically yellow marrow for fat storage. You'll find two kind of lining membranes. The inner membrane, so lining the cavity, as well as covering all of the little spicules or trabiculae of the spongy bone is called the endosteum, endo meaning inside. And then covering the outer bone is what we call the periosteum. And the periosteum is a lot more fibrous than, than the endosteum. And you'll see it actually has these perforating fibers here which help the tendons attached to the muscles kind of cl cling to our bones. Conversely, when we look at the short, irregular, and flat bones, we have no um, shaft, no diaphysis and epiphyses. Instead, essentially what we have is a bone sandwich. Um, so two kind of plates of compact bone with the spongy bone between them. So if you think of it as your sandwich, the compact bone is your bread, and the spongy bone is whatever you want inside your sandwich. Um, we still do have those inner and outer periosteum and endosteum membranes, um, but we also are lacking um, not only the shaft and the epiphyses, but no kind of marrow cavity. Instead, all of the spaces in between the spongy bone and all of the spaces in between the trabiculae um, get filled typically with red marrow. And again, if you have um, any articular surfaces on any of these particular bones or anywhere you find articular surfaces on any of these bones, you are going to find some highland articular cartilage.
Hematopoiesis is one of the things that takes place in our bones that I think is less obvious to most people. Uh, hematopoiesis takes place in our red marrow. So we find red marrow in the cavities of the spongy bone and then in the medullary cavities of newborns and like super young children. The long bones of adults have very, very little red marrow, typically just kind of the heads of the femur and the humerus, so the arm bone and the thigh bone. The red marrow is most active in what we call the diploe. It's that kind of space, that sandwich space between the, the bread compact bone in the flat bones and the irregular bones. So there's a lot more hematopoietic tissue in the axial skeleton, in the skull, um, and some of the irregular bones like the vertebrae. Um, the really neat thing about our yellow marrow, right, so we have a lot of red marrow when we're really, really little. As we age, we lose a lot, some of that red marrow uh, and it gets kind of converted into yellow marrow. We need the kind of a lot of red marrow when we're kids because our bodies are growing and as our bodies grow, we need our blood cell formation to kind of keep pace with our overall growth of our body. But once we've reached our kind of proper size, we need to maintain, of course, a certain homeostatic level of um, blood cell formation, but we don't need as much of that, right? And so we lose some of that red marrow and it becomes yellow marrow for frat storage. But let's say you were in a car accident and you hemorrhaged really badly. Um, well, your yellow marrow can actually kind of like revert back to being young childish red marrow um, if needed to kind of give you that extra little boost of blood cell formation after say you've hemorrhaged and lost a lot of blood which is pretty cool the other kind of level of um, gross anatomy that we typically look at uh, are called markings or landmarks now when we look at the bones they are not flat. They've got these weird projections that stick out on them. They've got grooves and ridges and lines and kind of holes in them. Um, and so the bone markings kind of help either put our skeleton together. Um, so they might be like a, an articulation point, almost like a human jigsaw puzzle. Um, they might be where muscles and tendons will attach uh, so that our muscles can move our skeleton or where ligaments will attach the bones together. If you've got holes and kind of notches in the bones, it's place, places for blood vessels and, and nerves to kind of pass through the skeleton, um, especially since the compact bone in particular is quite dense. Um, so we have three general types of bone markings or bone landmarks. We have projections, depressions, and openings. So there's a nice little table in your book table 6.2, bone markings. Um, so you'll see projections are very often sites of muscle and ligament attachment. So you have things like tuberosities, um, which are kind of these kind of rounded, kind of rough projections. You have crests, which are these kind of narrow ridges, usually quite prominent pieces of bones. You have trochanters, which are these very large, very kind of blunt processes, um, particularly here on the femur for muscle attachment. Lines are very narrow um, kind of ridges. Um, so they're not like a crust, which is like big and flary, um, but they're kind of less prominent, um, kind of real narrow little ridge of bone like this intertrochanter line here. Tubercles are very small rounded projections. Um, so you have these little kind of rounded projections here. Um, you also have one um, just underneath your knee on your um, kind of shin bone. Epicondyles are kind of raised projections on or above a condyle. We'll get to what a condyle is here in just a second. Spines are tend to be kind of sharp pointed, um, usually quite slender processes like the spinous process here that you see on uh, the vertebra. Um, and then any kind of bony kind of projection um, that doesn't kind of fall into one of those other categories will be called a process. Um, so you can see kind of that like a spinous process. The condyles like these here are um, projections that uh, form joints. Um, 
So condyles are joint making heads, joint making uh, facets, kind of flat surfaces. Um, they're going to be uh, where bones come together to make a joint. We also then have depressions and openings. Um, so a, a furrow, like a groove. Let's see, we've got a nice little groove around here somewhere. I right, see this little kind of carved out space here on the lower jaw. Um, fissures are very kind of narrow, kind of slits. Think like a fissure in a, like a piece of rock. Foramen is a fancy word for hole. It's all that really means. So anytime you have a little hole, you have a foramen or foramina plural. Notches are indentations, um, uh, kind of at the edge of the, the structure. Think like a, a shark taking a bite out of a boat, right? On the, the back of the boat, right? That's a, that's a notch. Um, we also have canals, like meatuses. Um, think your ear canal. Uh, a sinus is a, a kind of cavity within a bone, kind of an empty space, typically gets filled with air um, and usually lined by some sort of mucous membrane. Um, so you have sinuses here, um, you know, whenever you get a sinus headache, that's what we're talking about, these kind of air-filled spaces uh, that are getting infected sometimes. And then the other kind of depression um, that isn't actually, um, that often actually plays a role in forming joints is uh, what we call a fossa. These are kind of like a basin-like depression, so they're not real deep. Think more like um, the, the plate, the saucer for a cup, like a teacup, right? Not the cup itself, which is really deep, um, but the, the plate, the, the saucer, sits, the saucer, the little plate that the, the little teacup sits on. So it's a real shallow kind of basin-like depression. They are uh, a depression that actually serves as an articular surface. Um, so the best way to think of the skeleton is kind of really like this human kind of jigsaw puzzle. And so one of the things that you'll be required to do is identify not just these kind of generic markings, but all of these, well not all, most good chunk of the, uh, some of the most prominent and important bone markings on the bones of the skeleton. So it's not just the 206 bones of the body that you'll need to know, it's kind of all of these little pieces as well.